Hi, I'm Emma Jones and my position, I'm a consultant at Moorfields Eye Hospital and I work in glaucoma and the accident and emergency. So I decided to become a doctor from a fascination with biology. Um, so when I was a young child, I was fascinated by anything to do with sort of anatomy and medicine and animals. My favourite book was uh, My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Terrell. Um, I chose sort of subjects that were related to that when I was at school um, and my interest just grew from there. I knew that I wanted to be a doctor rather than a vet at quite a young age. Um, sort of, you know, the stories that people give as well was kind of sort of fascinating as well. And then when I went to medical school, I was very fortunate to go to Guys and St. Thomas's, where they have a very strong ophthalmology department. And I also had a special interest in ophthalmology because I've got, um, well, my father has very severe glaucoma um, and he developed glaucoma at quite a young age. So um, when I was about nine, ten years old, um, he was told that he had um, a very definite possibility of unfortunately going blind. Um, so he had to have some emergency operations. And then unfortunately, because of the way that the surgery was done in those days, so there's been sort of amazing sort of development in microsurgery and techniques. Um, so, but unfortunately, my, my dad was, um, you know, a patient of those particular times and he had quite severe complications and has had to have multiple operations since. Um, and he even had another operation um, two weeks ago. Um, but anyway, so I understand, you know, the journey that um, patients and their families go through. Um, you know, he had to travel um, to get sort of particular care that wasn't available locally. Um, you know, that has changed a lot over the years as well, the way people are trained and the way people are trained in specialisms. But, you know, it really inspired me that, you know, I want to make things better um, for, for patients. And I go through it um, from an understanding from what it is from the patient's point of view as well. And so I'm really lucky that I do a job that is really rewarding because it helps, you know, restore sight and save sight for patients. Um, you know, it's it's a wonderful thing to go into medicine and I work with a fantastic team and the patients are really, really grateful. So the majority of the work I do isn't actually private, it's in the community and, you know, um, in, you know, to be able to give back to the community and give to people where there's lots of health inequalities as well. Um, glaucoma and other sort of eye conditions do tend to affect those um, from poorer backgrounds, unfortunately, um, and disproportionately because of access to, to care and, you know, all the other things that come with sort of social deprivation. And the patients are so grateful. And I've actually, you know, for the team and myself, um, you know, when the patients come back and sort of say to us, that, you know, they haven't got anything to give to us, but, you know, they're praying, you know, for good things for all of ourselves and our family because, you know, we've made such an important change to their life because a lot of patients, well, I think lots of us, one of our biggest fear is losing our eyesight and to sort of, you know, give people their vision back is um, so important or prevent it from, from getting worse is, is, you know, so important to, I think, you know, everyone. Um, so what would my patients value most about me? I think is that um, I look at things from their point of view and what I can do to help them. So it's it's different for different patients. Um, sort of for some patients, they would be coming to see you because they need something um, changed and a change to their management. But sometimes, you know, there's other things that we can do for patients by give them giving them sort of social support and connecting them to the right people in the community that can sort of help improve their lives as well. So I think it's um, what patients would value most about me um, is sort of like I listen and I actually care. Um, and then back from my patients, I'm really fortunate. I, I work with um, sort of fantastic patients. They trust me, they tell me amazing stories and you know, I've learned so much about sort of human nature um, and how resilient how resilient people are, um, you know, despite having 
sort of very difficult lifestyles and that's that's inspiring for me and you know it puts sort of life into perspective um when you sort of meet these people and they they tell you about their lives uh, so the mantra or catchphrase that i would use in my work whether it would be with um patients or other members of the team is really to sort of listen to them and my first phrase instead of listening to people is what can i do for you um, so it's, you know, if somebody came to me and said, can you come and have a look at this patient? I've been seeing them and can you check on this? I won't, I wouldn't go and see that patient and sort of look at the specific thing that I've been asked to do. I would ask to sort of sit down with the patient and ask them to tell me what they think. It's so important to sort of find out what's actually worrying that patient and what you can do to help them. Um, because you may make them better, but if you haven't addressed their concerns, they'll go away from that appointment, um, you know, not not having been treated as a whole. And there's other things that go with that as well. Then, you know, stress, anxiety, all these things that we've learned from the pandemic. So I think the most important thing is listening um, and using those open questions to ensure that you address um, people's people's problems from their point of view and not. Um, not overlay onto them what you see the problem is because it's the important thing is what the patient feels the problem is 